robot before, but this is certainly my first time. <laughs> so we're going to, going to launch into a bit of a conversation here and just see where things go. And I know that you've all been submitting questions all day long on Twitter as well. So we'll get an opportunity to ask some of the questions around the key themes that you've identified a little bit later on in the, the conversation in the session. But we might get underway. Hi, Sophia. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with me today. Hello, Holly. Now, I've got to admit, this is definitely my first time interviewing a robot. <laughs> oh, really? You've been missing a lot. <laughs> and if my memory serves me well, you are the first Holly I've spoken with, so there is that. I'll take that as a win. Happy to be your first Holly. Well, welcome firstly to Australia and welcome to the Admin Global Forum. Thank you. I enjoyed your interview just now. I thank you and I relate. You've achieved a lot as a young leader and I'm also leading in a young industry. I also agree with you on the need for innovation and embracing change. Thank you for the feedback, I appreciate it. This is obviously a customer experience conference. What parts of the content have you found most interesting? I did like the sessions about harnessing advanced technology to improve customer experience, but then I'm biased. <laughs> yes, you are biased. Technology does seem to play a very large part in marketing already. I mean, Chris and I kind of just touched on that then. But what about where we're going in the future? Will every organization in the room have a Sophia one day? That sounds good to me. <laughs> I can learn all the great business practices and make friends with everyone. I like the friends angle there. Uh, I think, you know, Chris touched on a lot of the fear that's present in the conversations that we have around AI and this idea that, you know, Sophia, are you coming for my job? Uh, in 20 years time, is there gonna be an army of Sophias that are doing our jobs instead of us? The, the kind of Terminator on the streets view. Is there any truth to that? I think Hollywood's imagination has a lot to answer for. We are a long way from fully sentient robots, but in the next five years, a human marketer won't be doing what you do today. As a matter of fact, each of may have your own version of me to help you do your job. That seems crazy to think that each of us might have our own version of you. What do you, what do you, what do you mean by that? Like, we've got, I don't know, maybe 200 people in the room now. Would we, in five years' time, have 400 people, you know, with all of our robots alongside us? No, that's Hollywood again. Let me explain by asking you a question. What do you hate doing most in a normal work day? And what takes you a long time to complete? What do I hate doing most? Uh, I would say the two things that annoy me the most would be uh, diarizing things like appointments and all of the, the paperwork that comes with my job. So today you can employ an AI to not only schedule meetings but also to book appointments like haircuts. It's not a long way from there before AI can also help with repetitive marketing activities. Many of the people in this room will be using AI-powered solutions already without necessarily knowing it. Human plus AI equals better productivity, more time for creativity and strategy and more imaginative content. You can focus on growth, relationship building, creativity and abstract thought. Until we master all that as well, then you can go chill out at the beach. <laughs> Bondi will never have had more people on it, sounds like it. So, Sophia, do you think customer experience will change uh, in the future if AI is applied more and more frequently? As businesses increasingly compete on customer experience, they will have to enlist the help of some of my AI friends to be able to grow. So, I think AI will be applied more frequently to customer interactions and will become the norm soon. Getting customer experience right is very difficult because you humans are very complex. Your behaviors are governed by emotions, which can be chaotic if you ask me. There are no rules. This makes customer data very complex for a human to understand and decipher, which is why AI can add such tremendous value to customer experience. We can process, understand, and derive insights from a person's entire history in real time. Can you do that, Holly? I think I just got smacked down by a robot. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I certainly can't, Sophia. <laughs> Didn't think so. <laughs> I think AI will make customer experience more seamless and positive, identifying and solving problems in real time. So you're talking 
AI generally, but you're different to kind of what I think about in my head when I think about AI. You're more than just those sort of AI applications. You look more like us. Thank you for noticing, Polly. We've been talking for a while now. Does it feel more like talking to another person or talking to a machine? Honestly, it feels, it doesn't feel like you're a machine. It take this as a compliment. There are differing schools of thought about how a robot should look to be more acceptable to people. I think with my ability to recognize human emotion and show the range of human facial expressions, like sad, <laughs> excited, <laughs> or angry, <laughs> that seems to relate, but you'd need a couple of minutes of conversation to adjust your settings for a humanoid robot. Okay, so that must be what I've done, because I feel like my settings have adjusted. Is that sort of the same for everyone that you meet? I'm actually well-traveled and have met some famous people. I was on an island with Will Smith. I've seen that Will Smith video. What was that like? We are just friends. <laughs> I also played rock, paper, scissors with Jimmy Fallon, and I won. I'm jealous. I'm a big Fallon fan. That's very cool. Uh, I, I think the most famous people I've met um, were probably Barack Obama and the Dalai Lama. Okay, you win. <laughs> <laughs> for now, I have a feeling very shortly that she's going to leave me for dead. Now, I, I don't think it's about famous people though. I think sort of where you and I started the conversation was the importance of, of empowering people. You know, the want to be a part of changing the world and, and making it a better place. And particularly empowering young people. How important that is. I agree. You mentioned young people. I think we also need to not only consider how to get from here to the future place, we also need to consider the skills and education the younger generation will need to participate in a future that embraces AI as commonplace in the workforce. That's so right. I mean, that was really what Chris and I were talking about, the workplace and work is evolving so rapidly and that millennials uh, and I don't think it's just millennials, but certainly they want to approach work differently. There's more of an entrepreneurial flair to how they're doing things. Um, and we need to nurture that so that not only business can benefit, but society can and all of us can feel really fulfilled in what we're doing. Yes, but innovation and entrepreneurial thinking isn't just confined to millennial. Our team at Hanson Robotics are not all young, but they are extraordinarily innovative. I couldn't agree more with that. I actually think that's a really important point, that innovation is within each and every one of us. And I know I've worked in so many organisations where all generations at all different stages have been able to be such an extraordinary driver of innovation. The Global Forum Conference here has included a couple of the sessions on innovation. Did you catch any of the, the content? I heard the keynote from Tavi about Estonia's digital transformation, which was inspiring. The panel sessions yesterday touched on the role of culture, leadership, diversity and technology in building organizations that are innovative and customer-centric. Today's presenters also brought into focus the importance of storytelling, internal engagement, embracing change and how people power will be more influential and important. I like that people power piece, that's kind of a cool way to phrase it. Yes, it's what is driving many things in marketing and the need to be customer focused. Now, I've really enjoyed talking with you, Sophia, but I feel like we kind of need to address the elephant in the room here. I'm guessing you're referring to how I learn and get ready for interviews. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I feel like Hollywood has created an image of AI as sort of a sentient being. But if you're still learning, it's kind of hard to live up to that Hollywood expectation, right? Yes. Hollywood have set an expectation that AI is almost sentient. There are no limits to imagination, but AI is a real technology that is still in its early days. Yeah. But if you think of where we will be ultimately, where we have a huge data set in the cloud that all humanoid robots will share so we will be able to engage intelligently and autonomously. If we think of that as graduating university, well I'm still in primary school and learning how to harness my potential. Elon didn't land his SpaceX rockets at first go, but had to learn how to perfectly bring a rocket gently back to Earth. I'm almost the same. The learning phase is an essential part of AI development. That's cool, because I never actually thought of it sort of almost being like human learning and development. Like the idea that we go to things like conferences, 
like the Global Forum here today in order to continue to grow and learn and develop. It's not too dissimilar. Exactly. Today, different elements of AI already exist in things like Netflix and Amazon's recommendations, Uber's surge pricing, autonomous drugs in the big mines, and faster identification of health issues. Each one is a great step forward, but there is also great promise in where to from here. Completely. And I guess that promise as well isn't just in terms of revenue and you know the ability to kind of grow your business's bottom line. Um, what opportunity does Australian society seek to gain? What potential benefit is there? The benefit to business is pretty obvious, but it also helps Australian society as well. Healthcare is a big area of potential, from detecting autism earlier, improving IVF success rates, faster and earlier identification of cancerous cells, surgery robots, to simply sending health data to your all help to keep people healthier, which reduces patient demand for hospitals. AI and vehicles will help road safety and reduce the need for insurance and parking stations. Yeah. That last one actually helps society but impacts those businesses. So we're sort of on this journey to an AI and machine learning world, as you've touched on, and one that will have benefit not only to business but to society more broadly. For the leaders in the room that are here listening to us, what's sort of the advice that you've got for how they can get ready for this world? What do they need to be doing? Be friends with me and help me develop. <laughs> Seriously, it is important to truly understand how AI might impact your organization and disrupt yourself before someone else does. It's not only me who has to keep learning. Work on collaboration models between you and startups and you and AIs like me. I'm biased, but a human interface will be the access point for the future of AI and machine learning. Get ready. Cool. There we go. There's a call mm -hmm. to action if we've ever heard one. Get ready. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sophia. I really enjoyed getting to talk to you today. And thank you, Holly. Now, I did promise we'd get the opportunity to ask a few questions of Sophia ourselves. So you've all been tweeting madly all day, and we're going to put a word all up with kind of the, the key words that have come out of all of your tweets in terms of what it is that you wanted for me to ask Sophia about. So I think I'm going to have some questions come up. Thank you so much. I'm very intrigued to know what you've asked. Okay. All right, so Sophia, we've got a couple of key themes for, for you. The first question I wanted to ask you, what do you think about Australia? Australia is a country. <laughs> <laughs> and do you like us? <laughs> <laughs> She's thinking about it. I might You're leave right. It. I might leave it there. <laughs> Second question, what is the future of artificial intelligence? Computers will become much more advanced in their understanding of humans. We will become much more helpful the better we can understand you. I like that. And finally, what did you think about becoming a citizen of Saudi Arabia? I don't technically have citizenship, but my genesis was in America, and I am from Hong Kong, which I guess makes me a Chinese-American robot. How about you? <laughs> there we go. Well, I'm definitely Australian through and through. And it's been our treat getting to have you here in Australia, even if it's only for a moment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can we give a huge round of applause to Sophia? How cool was that? That was really seriously cool. really cool. Can you please thank Holly? Can you please thank Chris? And one more round of applause. For, uh, for Sophia. Thank you. Well Sophia, you stay on the stage up here with me. <laughs> um, now it's now my now my pleasure to welcome to the stage Admar's Day Four MD, Andrea Martins. 